Okay, hi, welcome back to All Things Equilateral. This is what happens when you film four videos. I did all my 2017 like favorites and least liked and all that. And then you somehow lose the SD card. We have been traveling a little bit at the end of December, including taking my son back to college and I don't know where the card is. So we're gonna do this all over again. And I bring to you today my December book haul. Now, there are a lot of books here, folks. And truth be told, I went ahead and shopped during the Cyber Monday book outlet sale. I love book outlet. I'm not even sponsored by them or anything like that. I'll leave a link down below because they have amazing deals. So most of these books came from there. A couple of were gifted over Christmas. And, you know, I'm just ready to face a brand new year with a lot of book challenges. One of my biggest is going to be my TBR takedown. You guys, I gotta read some of these books seriously and stop buying books that, you know, kind of impulsively I think I wanna read. So, brand new year, brand new me. You know how it goes. Let's see how long this lasts. The first book was gifted to me by my darling Emily over in Australia. Hi, Em. I know she loves two of these authors and I've heard so much about them, have not read them yet. Gonna change that this year. Kath Crowley and Fiona Wood and Simone Howell all wrote a book called Take Three Girls. And it says, rumor is the new truth. What are you going to do about it? Now, I don't even know if this has come out in the U.S. yet. If not, Book Depository for sure has it. This is about three girls that are all targeted by PSST. Psst. A toxic website that deals with gossip and lies. St. Hilda's Antidote to Cyberbullying. That's their private school. The Year 10 Wellness Program. Nice try, but sometimes all it talk is tearing my rug apart. Exploring Friendship, Feminism, Identity, and Belonging. Take Three Girls is Honest raw and funny and I mean does this not say 2018 I think it does for me the next book I know Kat's gonna feature in her book haul she loves Casey West and you know I enjoyed I think I've read two of her books now and this one love life and the list has gotten really good reviews I think so far it's one of her highly rated ones and it just came out Kirkus Reviews says a simmering romance that gives weight to mental health and hard choices okay it's about a girl in her summer and she's a painter and her paintings have been rejected by an art program because they have no heart. Can you even imagine? And she's also struggling with her mother's growing issues with anxiety. Ugh, I can so relate to all of this. But she gives herself one month to do ten things. Number three, to learn a stranger's story. Number five, to fall in love. Um, and to also face a fear. So I love list books, don't you? I, are you guys list makers? I am. So I can completely relate to that. Maybe I should make a list of things that will happen in January 2018. Okay, the next book was a gift to my kids. And okay, let's face it, myself. It's the UK edition of Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. I know that other people have, this is illustrated by Olivia Lomanek Gill. And it's the UK edition. Look, the Peruvian Viper Tooth. I just love it so much. I love the UK edition because the cover, I think, is just so pretty. I mean, it's just the blues. I tend to like blues. I'm wearing red. Maroon. Go figure. The next book is Charlotte Huang's Going Geek, and she's the author of For the Record, another book that's languishing my TBR. I am so changing that up. I don't know what I'm going to participate in as far as TBR takedowns. Maybe just that, but I'm doing that this year. Okay. This one is about a preppy East Coast boarding school. I am so there. You guys know I love boarding school stories. And it's uh, this Skylar Hoffman senior year, and she's hoping to have an am amazing boyfriend, coolest friends, most desirable dorm, while she's stuck in Abbott House, a tiny dorm known for, well, nothing. Living with a group of strangers everyone thinks is lame is bad enough. Worse yet is that Skylar wasn't exactly truthful about how she spent her summer break in Los Angeles, and her little white lie is causing her once rock solid romance to crumble fast you guys already know I'm there this is gonna be so good and an author that's new to me I'm very excited to read Charlotte's stories okay this one speaks to my heart I, I just posted on Instagram my board my boredom busters <laughs> I wish I was bored ah, boredom it's a fantasy. My reading slump busters are chiclet stories. I just love them. I, you know, it just speaks to me. And British chiclet is like the genre that is in the deep recesses of my heart. It never fails to get me enthused about reading again. And this book is about a girl who 
discovers her mother's kept a secret from her. And the secret leads her to enroll into Oxford University, hello, and meet a royal who just happens to be second in line to the throne. That's the title. The Heir and the Spare by Emily Albright. Book Slump Buster. This next book, I just, all the stuff that's been going on in 2017 with politics and stuff has me a little, you know, well, what's the word? Angry. And everyone who's read this book has talked about, it's just a very timely book for this crazy time of ours. It's Saints and Misfits by S.K. Alley. And you know, it's about a girl. Is she a saint, a misfit, or a monster? It's about bullying and acceptance and kind of finding where you fit in. So timely, you guys. I'm looking forward to this. Speaking of looking forward to, you all know I'm a huge Star Wars nerd. I mean, 1977, that level Star Wars nerd. And my son is to shout out to College Boy. We went to see the new movie three times. He might've seen it a couple more times because he went to see it with his friends. I kept picking up this book and putting it down. And finally he was like, mom, just get it because hello, it's you. 40 stories celebrating 40 years. Oh, has it really been 40 years, you guys? of Star Wars from a certain point of view. And you know, the authors, Beth Rebus, Ken Liu, E.K. Johnston, Sabah Tahir, Elizabeth Wayne, Chuck Wendick, I mean, Will Wheaton, hello, isn't he Star Trek? I never got into Star Trek, sorry. Renee Audier, Tom Engelberger, Meg Cabot, Pierce Brown, Ray Carson, Zoraida Cordova, and Claudia Gray. Those are just some of the authors. And everyone that's read it has talked about how good it is. Oh, you guys, this speaks to my, again, the inner parts of my heart. Speaking of inner parts of my heart, my dog. All right, everybody, this is the old man. This is Bex. He's 10 and a half and he jingles around and he barks and is basically a nuisance, but we love him anyway. So he's one of the two dogs I have. So Bex, you wanna talk about books? <laughs> Bex is like, no, I wanna sink into your lap. Our next book is an edition of Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, and it was just so pretty. Again, a book outlet. Look at you guys, this is, it's kind of chalkboard art. And it says, how do you know I'm mad, said Alice. You must be, said the cat, or you wouldn't have come here. And the reason that I got it is for Kat. She collects the, um, here's the Griffin. I think these are the original illustrations. <laughs> Bex is not happy. Kat collects editions of Lewis Carroll's uh, original story. So, Alice in Wonderland. And I couldn't resist getting this. This is on Book Outlet. It's a paperback copy and it's adorable. The next book was sent to me by my darling Katie over on Monday Moms. Hey Katie, I'll link Monday Moms down below. She knows the kind of books I like and I have not read much to witty novels dismay. I've not read this author's books, the Shatter Me series, but Tahara Mafi wrote a book called Furthermore and then she wrote which would look at this cover and it's based, I think, on a different type of mythology. And I wanna say, I wanna say it's Middle Eastern, maybe Persian, oh my gosh, if I get this wrong, I'm so sorry, you guys. But it's about a girl, Laylee, who remembers happier times before her beloved mother died, before her father was driven by grief, lost his wits and his way, and she was left as the sole remaining Mordishur in the village of Witchwood, destined to spend her days scrubbing the skins and souls of the dead in preparation for the afterlife. I love different mythologies. I've gotten into Norse mythology. I still have to read the Neil Gaiman book, but this, you know, it's something different and it's middle grade, I think. So I wanna read a little more middle grade this year. You know, Book Outlet, they give you these $5 coupons, you guys as bookmarks, they're so smart. Lish McBride's Pyromantic is another book that has been recommended to me. Her previous series, Hold Me Close Necromancer, I think is the first book, has been very recommended because I like paranormal stories, but I like them with a big dose of snark. And this is supposed to be just that. So this is the sequel to the book, uh, Firebug, and I don't know if it's a series of three or two, but Book Outlet had it on sale, so I grabbed it because I do also have Firebug. 
I read the first book in the series in I think 2016. And again, it was a different mythology and yet familiar. Roshan Chashki's A Star Touch Queen is the book I'm referring to. And I loved it. I so loved it. Talk about kind of your beauty and the beast. It's the god of death, I believe. And it's told from an Indian mythology perspective. How common are our stories? I mean, I know the story of Persephone and the Star Touch Queen was the Indian version of that. It's amazing to me how the mythologies throughout time and lands and countries have similar stories. This is A Crown of Wishes and it's a follow-up to it. Again, you guys, I'm so looking forward to dipping in to just a different world, something that I don't know much about. Okay, the next book is by an illustrator whom I love. Her whimsical children's illustration like paintings and drawings have been something that I've loved throughout many, many years. When my kids were small, man, I just adored her Etsy shop and I used to just sit there and even before Pinterest, just bookmark it and say, okay, you know, as soon as I can, I'm gonna try to buy one of these prints. I do have three or so of her prints and I treasure them. You guys will see them displayed on my Instagram and on the shelves on occasion. So it's, I'm so glad she's writing books. Emily Winfield, Mart, Snow and Rose. And if you guys are longtime followers of her blog, she just lives the kind of life I want to live, honestly. It's so beautifully artistic and just whimsical, everything about it. This is a story of two sisters, if you guys know the fairy tale. I think it's based on that. There were two sisters, as different as night and day, they lived in the woods, but it hadn't always been so. So it's about Snow White and Rose Red, the old fairy tale that I'm not horribly familiar with, but I just want to give a shout out to it. Look at the end papers. And then Emily's illustrations are amazing. Look at this little red cap. I think that's what they're called. They're just beautiful. And her bears. I love bears. This is another middle grade book. And I am genuinely, genuinely excited to read it. Let's see what it looks like. Here's the cover. Or without the cover of the book jacket and then look at the spine it actually is black with copper gilt lettering and then along here it's the same scrolly graphic as the end papers amazing i'm so glad she's writing books i'm also mad thanks amazon for this look at that they folded it i know book nerds you all feel my pain don't you You're like brand new book and they folded it those dang people packaging it. Oh my goodness, look. Look at her thank you page. It's a fox. Her illustrations. She, her Etsy shop is still around, uh, even though she's super famous. <laughs> and it's called The Black Apple. And I can link that down below too. The last book. Okay, I, I'm not going to cry. I'm not going to cry. I'm not going to cry. The last book is by my darling friend, Heather Petty. And it's Locke and Maury, The Final Fall. It's the last book in the series. And my sweet Heather is an amazing author. If you haven't picked up this series, it is the Sherlock Holmes retelling or reimagining with Sherlock and Moriarty is a girl. So, and it takes place kind of during their teenage years, their formative years, if you will. And you get to understand how they became the Sherlock and Moriarty that we know, the kind of the, the trope, if you will. But Heather, I'm gonna cry because in your acknowledgements, she said, and to Sophie Rigsby, who lets me go on and on about ideas and dreams and wishes and basically inspires with Sophie time trademark. We always talk about that whenever we can manage it. I owe you all the coffee and probably dinner, definitely cocktails after. Heather, girl, <laughs> you owe me nothing. I love, there's nothing in this world like talking to an author about what they're working on, what they're hoping to work on. She inspires my own creativity and I wouldn't be here talking to you if it wasn't for her. So I owe her all the scones and all the tea and all the coffee and definitely all the cocktails. Sales. Thank you so much, Heather. And then you guys are gonna laugh because I'm changing things in my house, much to my kids' dismay. Ooh, things are falling. These next books I just thought were good cookbooks and I've been coveting them for a while. I saw them on Book Outlet and I was like, whoa, are you serious? I mean, they were only, I think like four or five dollars. It's the kitchen, fast as, big fat naughty word. It's a way to approach a vegan, 
cooking and eating one pot meals, plant-based dishes and comfort food. And you guys, um, any dish with fat in the name is cool with S. Really, really funny, well-written. Their next book, The Kitchen Party Grub, Eat Clean, Party Hard. I mean, my kids are gonna hate me, but these recipes look so good. They don't hate me, they just think like, oh gosh, here comes mom with yet another new fangled, you know, diet thing. So, well, this is one of my favorites. Look, big ass salad bowl. <laughs> it's literally, my kids will tell you, it's literally something that I would call a recipe. So, what books did you guys get in December? What books are you looking forward to reading? Let me know down below, give me a like. Hey, subscribe and click on that bell because you never know when I post. I am so haphazard. I where I'm gonna get better. 2017 has been quite a year for most of us and I couldn't have done it without you guys. You kind of keep me sane in this little corner of book two. See you next time. Cut.